Hi, this is Dr. Gregory Sadler. I'm a professor of philosophy and the president and founder of an educational consulting company called Reason.io, where we put philosophy into practice. I've studied and taught philosophy for over 20 years, and I find that many people run into difficulties reading classic philosophical texts. Sometimes it's the way things are said or how the text is structured, but the concepts themselves are not always that complicated, and that's where I come in. To help students and lifelong learners, I've been producing longer lecture videos and posting them to YouTube. Many viewers say they find them useful. What you're currently watching is part of a new series of shorter videos, each of them focused on one core concept from an important philosophical text. I hope you find it useful as well. Justice is a term which covers a lot of different bases and can mean a lot of different things. Ross, in speaking of the prima facie duty of justice, wants to narrow it a bit so that it doesn't bleed over into some of the other duties like that of reparation, that of gratitude, that of fidelity. He treats it as being what he calls a general duty. So that means a duty that applies across the board for all of us in relation to everybody else. That doesn't mean that there can't be certain specific cases where the duty may be reinforced by the relationship that we have to other people. So, for example, um, if I have a previously existing relationship with somebody, they may, they may think that I have a, a stricter requirement to make sure that they're getting their fair share. They ought to be, I ought to be looking out for them because we already know each other. So, you know, it, and it, it makes sense. You know, if I am the coach of my kids' little league team, and what we're talking about here in terms of fairness is that people get to play a certain amount regardless of how good or how bad they are, and then above and beyond that, the good players get to play more. And, you know, some people might say, look, you're letting your kid play too much, your kid's no good, that would be unjust, and they would be rightly criticizing me for, for playing favorites in that case. On the other hand, maybe I'm, you know, the other extreme, and I want to show how I'm not, you know, being unfair to everybody. So even though my kid is great, I don't let him or her play as much. And my kid could come to me and say, hey, what, what's going on, Dad? How come you're treating me this way? I mean, it's one thing for you to be unfair to somebody over there. That's bad already. But you're being unfair to me, and I'm your kid. So these, these sorts of special relationships, specific relationships, particular relationships, they can make the obligation to, to justice a bit more stringent. But in general, it is something that we owe to everybody. What is justice then? So Ross says, I, I don't want to get it mixed up with, say, repaying your debts. That's part of the duties of fidelity. If I take out a loan, I should pay back the loan. It is just in a certain sense that I pay back the loan, but not just in the sense that Ross is talking about here. He says, justice consists in this. Bringing about a distribution, so we're allotting people different things, of happiness of other people in proportion to merit. So what does that mean? That means when I'm dividing things up, when I'm assigning tasks, when I'm divvying up the income or the bonuses or cutting up the, the, the roast beef or pick whatever you like, when there's some sort of good that can be shared among other people, I ought to proportion that good, that, that, that happiness producing good, in proportion to what people actually deserve. There may be cases where everybody deserves the same share. You know, uh, if I have five kids and all of them are involved in different activities, should I say, well, you know, little Johnny, I really like Johnny better than the other kids, so I'm going to spend twice as much time on his activities as a father that, as I will on the other ones. Or maybe, you know, I don't really like Susie, and I like Johnny, so I'm going to take Susie's share of, of attention, and I'm going to totally deprive her of it and give it to Johnny. Um, 
there are cases, you know, where we say, no, look, you ought to be giving equal attention to all of them. And if you, you know, you could say, well, in this case, I'm mistaken about what counts as merit. Being somebody that I like, that's not something that merits them getting more attention or less attention or a bigger share of the dinner or, you know, more scholarships or less scholarships. That's, you know, that, that's actually to commit injustice, to, to privilege things like, well, I happen to like you and I don't like you. Um, we can think about other things that would be injustice of that sort, too. You know, discrimination on the basis of race or gender or veteran status or, or religion, unless it's somehow relevant to the case at hand, um, you know, probably everybody should get the same share in, in that case. So there can be other cases where justice says this person should get more and this person should get less. Think about grading, for example. I don't give everybody an A in my classes, I don't give everybody an F, and I don't give everybody a C. As a matter of fact, I don't even grade on a curve because I think that curves are kind of unfair, you know, saying, well, there's this big, you know, everybody should be more or less in the middle getting a C except for the really smart kids who really work hard and they'll get an A, and the really dumb kids or the ones who don't work hard, they'll get an F. And then there'll be, you know, a somewhat larger group that get a D and a somewhat larger group that get a B. I actually base it, I think that's kind of unfair, I actually base it on what a person does. So that's proportioning that little portion of happiness, grades, to merit, what it is that they have done through their performance. Now, justice may also involve preventing an unfair distribution or correcting an unfair distribution as well. So he, you know, he, he says that at a different point in there, but it, it's important to bring that up because sometimes justice means restoring a balance that has been lost or disrupted, sometimes deliberately by people, sometimes just over time. You know, and for example, here would be a very concrete example of this. Um, a lot of people complain about the rise in college tuition. Colleges become so much more expensive. And they start looking for, well, who's, who's responsible for that? Um, and this is a really big problem. Um, well, it, it's not that they're paying professors more. It's not that particular part of the payroll in academic affairs. Because a lot of schools have shifted away from full-time, you know, tenure-track professors to hiring more adjuncts, which is very cheap. Um, as a matter of fact, they've gotten themselves in some, some deep financial trouble that's going to be hard to get out of that way. Instead, what they spent the money on was high-paid high administrators and lots and lots of, of staff, you know, particularly in student life and things like that, and some on technology, legitimate expense there, I think, and a lot on gussying up the dorms and gyms and uh, campuses and cafeterias and even the classrooms so that they could, you know, compete with other schools that are also doing the same thing that's where the bulk of the money has gone to. And so if we wanted to talk in terms of fairness and we ask, well, who's actually doing the educating? Is it the administrators? Not really. Is it the staff? Well, they, they play a vital support role, but not really. They're not really educating. Is it the buildings themselves that all this money's been pumped into and, and can't be gotten out of, unfortunately? That's not doing any educating. The technology is a good tool. We can say that, you know, making smart classrooms, uh, having, you know, um, uh, course learning sites, that sort of thing that, that, that's kind of handy. Uh, but you don't have to give every single student an, an iPad, for example. Um, what you really need for education to take place is competent teachers and students who are, are ready to learn and some sort of structure. So it seems fair that the, the, you know, more of the tuition money should probably go to faculty development, uh, improving the condition of faculty members, faculty research, things like that. Um, now, you'd, you know, it'd also be fair to say, look, if we're going to give you money for that, it better pay off in, in, you know, actual learning for your students. But I don't think that's particularly onerous or difficult to demonstrate. 
that would be opposed to say, let's hire another VP of this, or we need you know 20 more staff to, to do this you know early early warning initiative or something along those lines, or let's build a new uh, annex to the gym. That would be a bit unfair to the students, to the university community, to the greater public. Um, we could explore lots and lots of issues this way. One of the other things that I want to bring up is Ross explicitly says not only is it about distribution of happiness as such, maybe, you know, pleasure, virtue, intellectual development, but the means to happiness. So what are the means to happiness? Wealth is one of them. Ross would say that we actually have a duty to bring about an equitable, proportionate distribution of wealth in proportion to merit. Or if we happen to inhabit a culture, an institution, in which things have gotten unbalanced, as they have in many places, then we have duties to correct that, to prevent it from getting worse. If people propose things that are going to be more unequitable, then we have a, a duty to prevent that, Ross would say. What are other possibilities besides wealth? Opportunity. Does everybody have the same opportunities or at least proportionate opportunities? You know, what might we proportion? What might count as merit in this case? Um, applying yourself and, and demonstrating interest. It, it could be that we, we say... Um, not everybody gets to go to professional school because not everybody can actually pass the test scores. But if you're marginal and you belong to groups that have been historically left out, maybe there is a case for helping you in. But then you also have to say, well, what about those other, other marginal students who aren't so privileged as to have the right you know, race, gender, ethnicity, in some cases religion, that sort of thing. Um, do they get, are they being, you know, shafted at, at, in that case? It's a good question. This, this pro points to the difficulty of proportioning things. It's very important, Ross doesn't spell this out in this chapter, but it's very important to think about what the criteria are for determining what counts as merit. The, what we're going to proportion the distribution of happiness or the means to happiness to. Um, in addition to you know, wealth and opportunities, we could also think of positions of responsibility, we could think of titles, we could think about things that I've brought up already like time and attention. Um, all of these can be matters for prima facie duties to bring about a just state, to maintain a just state, to prevent unjust states, or to correct unjust states.